Welcome to the Mahindra Transport Excellence Award Series 2012 on ET Now, a series of panel discussion that aims to look at the challenges and the opportunities faced by the transport sector in India. And today's topic of discussion is on the finance perspective in the transport and logistics space. And to do that, we have a eminent panel over here with us in our studio. So let me start by introducing our panel for the show. We have Kaushik Banerjee, President, Asset Finance, Chola Mandalam. Mr. Dinanath Dubashi, CEO, LNT Finance. Mr. Sumit Mukherjee, Senior Vice President, Magma FinCorp. And Amit Bam, Director, Access Carriers. Welcome, gentlemen, on the show. But before we begin the panel discussion, we also have Narin Mehta, CEO and MD of Mahindra Navistar Automotive, joining us from Pune. So let's see what are his views on this topic. Nalin. We at Mahindra not only are producing trucks which are very suitable for high productivity, uh, we have also done our bit uh, to bring uh, professionalism in this industry. I think a big role uh, the young transporter or the modern and the youth transporter can play uh, in this industry, we have really encouraged. Uh, uh, by creating uh, awards uh, for the youth transporter uh, uh, personality and also uh, uh, doing certain uh, management programs uh, 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 for the youth transporters. In fact, uh, recently uh, we had a batch of 30 young uh, transporters doing a two-week extensive course in IIM Ahmedabad uh, on, on how to run their business more professionally and how to take it forward. And I think these are the kind of initiatives, uh, you know, which will change the face of the industry and, and its ability uh, uh, to expand and raise funds uh, required for that expansion in the coming years. Okay, thanks Nalin for joining us on this panel discussion. So, the gentlemen, there you saw Nalin giving his views. So, let us start this panel discussion and let me ask all of you guys, how can the transport companies get uh, funding from financiers for their growth and aspirations? So, we can start with you, sir. An excellent repayment track record goes a long way towards ensuring future funding for a borrower, uh, supported by stability in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that we look at is the asset application plan. So when a borrower is buying an asset, we like to look at what is it that they would apply the vehicles in. That plays an important role. Now, supposing the customer is new and he does not have a repayment track record, or he doesn't have stability in business, then the customer equity in the asset becomes a critical component of the lending program. Okay. So they're inversely proportionate. The more experienced, the sta more stable the company, the less equity that's required. The less stable, uh, the less experience, the more equity that's required in the asset. Okay. Mr. Dubashi, do you have anything to add to it? Yeah, I think professionalism, track record are the mm -hmm. two, uh, two most important uh, factors. In fact, in the lighter way, you can say that if you repay the existing loans in uh, I mean, we are no longer talking on time, but at least on a reasonable amount of time, uh, it would go a long way uh, in getting additional finance. Okay. Uh, there are various types of finance which are required by people, and most of the time we talk about asset-based uh, asset or asset-backed financing. Mm -hmm. But uh, what the industry needs is uh, more non-asset-backed uh, financing. Finance. Industry needs for working capital, for fuel, for tires, for uh, so many other things. Uh, uh, for operating uh, a transport industry. And hence, uh, uh, we need to go beyond the normal asset-backed uh, models, models. Uh, to look at it. And hence, once again, I think it comes back to track record, track record, and track record, uh, really. All right, all right. Mr. Mukherjee, do you have? No, I think it's been covered by Kaushik and Mr. Dubashi. Uh, okay. Track record, experience, relationship, you know, that's more or less what uh, you know a financier looks at when he decides to lend. Okay, Amit, so you've heard the financiers speak. You're from the client side, mm -hmm. you can say. So, what, what, what have been your experiences and how do you think? Uh... See, we've been very uh, fortunate on that front. Uh, my father started this company about 35 years ago, so we have a decent track record okay. in the industry right now. And uh, But what also the financiers definitely look at, because I get a lot of sales, uh, you know, people uh, who come in and who, you know, uh, market the product. They mm -hmm. also look at how well that industry for which the funding is going to be done is doing. Okay. So that is that also plays a very critical role in uh, how much funding is given, how much exposure the company previously has, 
along with that NBFC or the bank. Mm -hmm. And of course, again, it comes down to track record and also a little bit of interpersonal relationship, how uh, it has been over the years, what uh, experience you've had with that transporter or that logistics provider. Uh, like Sir rightly mentioned, uh, uh, I think we need some non-asset based funding. funding and a lot of companies now, a lot of NBFCs and retail companies also have started corporate cards. Uh, a, a unique way of funding, uh, say, you know, diesel or uh, there's the other companies who've been funding your insurance or tire. So, you know, per se, everything is covered by uh, the entire scope. scope. And uh, again, I think uh, the, the market mm -hmm. or the number of players in the in the lending mm -hmm. market have increased probably many folds. So uh, the criterion which is required for funding has probably, you know, become a little more lenient. And uh, yes, funding is easily so, available. So we've heard about non-asset based funding. So Mr. Kaushik, uh, what, what do financiers really look for in uh, funding a transport company? Right now, is, as, you know, as the regulations stand, <coughs> the non-asset based part, especially for large fleet operators, is handled by banks. Okay. Because typically uh, an NBFC mm -hmm. cannot give a working capital loan. Right. So here what we actually do is if a customer has a good track record with us, we give a collateral an, ad an additional loan on the existing asset. Asset. It's called a top up or okay. a refinance. Okay. That goes a long way towards meeting the working capital needs of the borrower. Mm -hmm. So every company probably has its own set of set parameters up. in terms of what level they get the loan. But refinance and top up loans form a large part of the lending program for NBFCs. Okay. So that to a large extent, especially for a smaller operator, mm -hmm. addresses the working capital. Working capital. Okay, Mr. Dhiranath, uh, <coughs> what are the hurdles that a new company might face while entering uh, this space, the transport sector? Uh, and is financial burden to a large uh, for a new player entering the market? This industry has a little bit dichotomous uh, situation. Actually, entry in this industry is very easy. Okay. If you don't have a truck, if you are a driver, it is the getting a finance is the easiest part. Okay. Okay, because everybody is standing in a queue to give you your first truck. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, there are various ways in which certain players, perhaps because of lack of their understanding, even do 100% financing. The issue happens when you want to scale up. So one truck, two trucks, truck. three trucks. So then managing a fleet. After that, where do you get qualified yeah. drivers? How do you manage uh, in a way that the drivers don't cheat you? How do you uh, protect uh, revenues from uh, leaking? So it all depends uh, a lot on how you professionalize the business Absolutely. As well. So really more than entry barriers, I would think the scale up barriers mm -hmm. are much higher you know, and uh, for, for, uh, transporters. For, for transporters. And uh, you have to reach the pedigree of uh, my friend here uh, of 35 years to to really have the the professionalism and uh, scaling up. Uh, now, sir has that. pointed out, uh, you know, how professionalizing it is a uh, challenge also in a right. way but uh, there are a lot of long established players in the transport sector and mostly uh, are small family run operations sure so you know does it make a difference to the financiers mm -hmm. because we've got three of them here does it really make a difference to the financiers uh, you know in i mean like uh, you've answered in your question uh, the small based uh, family businesses yet are being funded so i don't think that actually makes a uh, you know a big difference to them but what yes uh, like so i when we talk about the scaling up the scaling up is an issue like he pointed yeah. out what happens is uh, a, a, a fleet owner is uh, by nature wants to increase the fleet because mm. there there's ample opportunity in the market but uh, what he forgets is the hurdles that come along with it. That is the maintenance, the, the leaking out. And because these are all man-managed businesses and not system driven, there is a lot of uh, involvement or leaking out mm -hmm. through different channels. Okay. And uh, managing that is mm -hmm. something that should be done consistently over a period of years. Today, we have about 80% uh, of the entire industry who have less than two trucks or two trucks. Mm -hmm. So uh, because there's a lack of differential differentiation in the services that we provide, say for example, I provide a certain service. Uh, a person who has another one or two trucks also provides the same service. So there's no value, uh, an additional value. Of course, there's credibility and reliability and you know all the timely reports and all of that. But primarily, uh, 
we both do the same job. Okay. So there's price erosion. So, I mean, we would definitely like if there is an integration of a few players and, you know, uh, probably 3PL coming in or 4PL coming in. I mean, today, even today, the 3PL percentage in India is probably eight or ten times less than what we have in even big countries. All right, Amit, I'll let, tell you to hold that thought. Sure. Because we'll go into a small break. It's time for a very short break on the Mahindra Transport Excellence Award Series 2012 on ET Now. But don't go anywhere because this discussion continues on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching the Mahindra Transport Excellence Award Series 2012 on ET Now, where the topic of discussion is the financial perspective of the transport and the logistics sector in India. Now, Amit, you were talking about 3PL and the 4PL thing. So let me start uh, mm -hmm. my question to you yeah, is, sure. with the ever-increasing interest rates yes. by the financiers, uh, are the banks providing any special schemes also for fleet owners? As you've been a client? See, uh, usually when we lend money, we understand, you know, the repayment term. So, you know, we have an opportunity to do it for 36 months or 48 months or 50, uh, uh, 60 months or whatever that is. So we have that flexibility with the bank. So uh, given the uh, current growth in the industry and given the current perspective, we, you know, go in for, say, 48 months. And uh, down the line, if we start feeling that, you know, okay, uh, the industry is not going the way it is, then we request our uh, fellow uh, financiers to either top, top us up or refinance it. And looking at our past record, they are very uh, more, more than happy to do that. So these are the kind of schemes that are prevalent. But because of the higher interest rates, the amount of debt you want to borrow is reducing. So I think uh, we need to firstly lock interest rates because interest rates are the primary backbone of this industry or the entire nation if we, i think it's one of the highest things that drive sentiments in the country I, uh, the entire world you, is looking do you at. agree with what uh, see Amanda you know again uh, you know th there's no homogeneity in interest rates because you can't paint the entire sector with one brush mm -hmm. the interest rate that is charged by financiers is a str is basically related to the risk profile of the borrower okay right so in certain cases you likely have a transporter the size of yours sure will actually enjoy a very competitive uh, rate of interest, right? And as you go down the chain, in terms of size of the you know, mm. size of the fleet or the file of the borrower, the interest rates go up. That's called risk-based pricing. The other point is typically in the CV industry. Mm -hmm. Unlike the home loan industry, the interest rates are fixed rates. Okay. In the home loan sector, it's, it's, it's a floating rate, rate of interest, yeah. right? Because th the borrower here would like to know exactly what his EMI is. He doesn't want any surprises. But do you think so uh, the a risk floating, is like floating rate model can work? It'll be very difficult. It'll okay. be very difficult, especially the profile of borrowers, mm -hmm. right? You cannot. They, they no. They they want thirty six value uh, same value repayments. So they plan their entire enterprise around this. Does so. L and T want to try a model like that? We we tried. I mean, I agree that it okay. is difficult to have a floating rate, but uh, but it was difficult in many other sectors, and slowly it has come in. I mean, uh, high and low interest rates is a matter of cycle. Mm -hmm. It goes up and come down as uh, as sure as the sun rises and sets. Okay, it just depends on whether it happens every three years or every five years. Sure. That depends. In fact, right now the interest rates are on the way down. Uh, the only way to ensure that risk is priced correctly is one the knowledge in uh, of the industry of the lender. Mm -hmm. um, an answering your specific question, if we are able to more popularize floating mm -hmm. rate uh, lending. Uh, I am sure that overall cost of the borrower will Absolutely. Reduce. But if we see at the commercial vehicle scenario in India, uh, what do you think, uh, Smith, is on, on the financial front? You know, how is it doing? So the last one year has been uh, very difficult for the commercial vehicle industry, uh, especially on the MNHCV side. Uh, there has been a degrowth now uh, for close to seven, eight months, month on month. Uh, however, on the small commercial vehicle, there has been a growth of 20% uh, and, uh, you know, that's sustained. So, you know, that's the, you know, the last mile connectivity and the rural consumption, uh, you know, theme that is playing out on that sector. LCVs on the last uh, three to four months now has shown a degrowth on the primary sales. Mm -hmm. I think MNHCV is going to be uh, a difficult uh, segment again for the next at least six to seven months. Uh, we see SCV continuing to, you know, grow at, at the current rates. 
LCVs, you know, should taper off and, you know, maybe we'll see some growth uh, in the second quarter. That would largely depend on how the monsoon is, how the, you know, the agri produce, how the agri price is coming in. So that's, uh, it, it's a difficult... Uh, we talk about the HCVs? Nothing, uh, it's not going to, in my view, for the next seven to eight months, we are not going to see uh, any positive uh, movement. The banking system has largely uh, ignored the commercial vehicle sector for, for the lack of due diligence and collaterals, but banks have also been uh, keen on, as, uh, as truck purchases was the priority uh, sector lending. Uh, is, is there any meat in the statement, do you agree? There was perhaps some time back, but uh, the scenario has changed. Mm -hmm. scenario has changed quite drastically. Uh, there was, uh, you know, uh, NBFCs could lend to uh, this sector and then downsell those loans to uh, banks or borrow from banks for these assets. And that was considered as priority sector for banks. Now that has stopped for the last one year or a little more than that. And hence, banks are required to lend directly mm -hmm. for the priority sector, especially the private sector banks have uh, come in quite aggressively uh, into this sector. So I don't think if I have to paint it with a general brush, I don't think it is uh, any longer true that okay. uh, banks are, uh, especially the professional or private banks mm -hmm. are looking uh, askance at this sector. Uh, most definitely not. Um, large companies like Amitji's never had a problem. But uh, now even banks are going even into the first time uh, buyers, either directly or through their NBFCs that uh, they have. But, we, but we never look at the logistical costs of it, right? right. So Amit, uh, do you want to throw some light on it? When we talk about the logistical cost as compared with the, uh, the rest of the world or the big countries, mm. I think what we fail to understand is, you know, we should definitely compare in a, a level playing field. Uh, given the same conditions that they have and given the uh, conditions that we have, we have one of the worst rail uh, routes, one of the worst, I think, road routes in terms of, I think, the entire 60,000 kilometers that we have, uh, the, the road, road kilometers that we have, only 2% is national highways. Mm -hmm. We think there is a big, big, big requirement of uh, investments in infrastructure mm -hmm. as far as road and rail is concerned. We also, uh, I think, uh, there needs to be a certain... Um, industry sta uh, status that should be given to given us to. as uh, transporters. Would it, would it, uh, Sumit, do you think uh, NBFCs uh, are a more preferred options by logistical companies for financing with a, a bank? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, see, again, you know, to break up the industry into uh, two segments, the large companies and the retail sector. Uh, that is where uh, NBFCs have a monopoly in terms of financing. Okay. We lend based on surrogates. A bank would typically want documentation. documentation. They would want to understand cash flows. They would want to understand uh, maybe you know uh, uh, balance sheets. Uh, these are not available with the uh, you know one two vehicle owner. So we are uh, you know actually filling a very uh, a necessity in terms of financial inclusion of uh, you know uh, of the segment that the bank is not able to address. So the way we are structured, the way we have understood this industry. Uh, banks are a very long way off from there. All right, with that thought, it's time for another short break on the Mahindra Transport Excellence Award Series 2012. But don't go anywhere because this discussion continues on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching the Mahindra Transport Excellence Award Series 2012 on ET Now, a series of panel discussion that focuses on the opportunities and the challenges faced by the transport sector in India. We're into the last segment of this panel discussion, which is seeing a finance perspective to the transport and the logistics sector. So, uh, let me start with you, Mr. Dubashi. Do you think uh, you know the proposed guidelines by RBI uh, on NBFCs is an area of uh, concern now? So you will be talking about the Usha Dorat Committee recommendations? I think generally speaking, so if I have to speak generally, the, com the, the recommendations are good. Mm -hmm. If we have to limit to the area of discussion today, uh, with financial inclusion being the clear agenda, clear agenda. Uh, NBFCs uh, are important and NBFCs specialize in lending to this sector. Now, one particular uh, recommendation reduces the NPA recognition from 180 100. degree days to 90 days. Yes bringing it uh, on par with uh, what the banks do. Sure. Many times loan go beyond uh, three installments, that is 90 days, even four installments, mm. and come back. Okay. So uh, the very fact that it has gone beyond 90 days actually doesn't mean that it is an NPA. I don't think it is, uh, you know, uh, uh, hence we have made, I think, as a industry, mm. we have made representation to buy RBA. Let's hope that... And you're flexible uh, as well. 
Yeah. 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 So great, great. Uh, so any final thoughts on this topic? We'll start with you, Amit. I I really think that there needs to be a lot of uh, government involvement as far as the infrastructure is concerned to uh, boost the logistics industry. At the same time, I think uh, suppliers or uh, the people who are uh, using our services need to understand value in our services to distinguish us from the boys, the so-called people who have two or three trucks. Mm. We can't be categorized in the same uh, foray. Sure. So um, yes, uh, value has to be recognized and paid for, and less premium is given to you know uh, value, uh, uh, value addition, like uh, for example, dust proofing. In Indian context, is not given as much weightage as as yeah. something <laughs> else as basic services are concerned. So I think. So, uh, your 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 thoughts. The NBFCs, uh, you know, have been a very active player in the finance uh, sector. Uh, transportation as a sector has been well funded uh, for the past 50 years or so. So, you know, I, I guess that uh, with the external environment slowly improving, I think things will be back on track in terms of uh, the financing and the industry growth. So I think uh, NBFCs are there. So we are going to continue service the uh, sector. All right, Mr. Duvashi, your, your, your final thoughts? So my final thought will actually be the first thought which I expressed here. Is okay. that let's not look at this sector or uh, what NBFCs are doing for this sector with uh, wearing the spectacles or glasses of the year 12, 13 or what we see in the first half mm. of 13, 14. Uh, the association of NBFCs with the transport sector has been decades, not, not years, uh, decades. I think uh, we have fed off each other in the good way. We have grown with each other. And uh, I think uh, this too shall pass, as it is said. And uh, we will continue to grow together. Uh, you know, I think I will point out from an industry perspective, not finance per se, but the industry perspective is the fact that today, we are taking a point of time view. 12, 13 has not been a good year. Mm -hmm. OK, but we have to recognize the fact that India is a deficit country okay. Okay, across all essential items. You know, as uh, Amit pointed out, you know, two percent of the roads, you know, carry forty-four percent of India's goods, and that's Lord, a statement yeah. of right. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you know, how, from housing to roads to basic essentials, right? We are way behind any developed country. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we need to have transportation, you know, by road, by rail, whatever, to reach essential items out to the the, the, the public. And as long as the demand remains, there is a very, very good prospect for the industry as a whole. All right. Okay, you look at any analyst report, they talk about a double digit growth over the next five to 10 years for the CV industry. Okay, it needs a certain amount of discipline, sure. right? It needs a certain amount of, uh, as you said, regulatory components, components, but the industry yeah. per se cannot be viewed from a single year uh, perspective. All right, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the show today. And it's time for us to say goodbye on the Mahindra Transport Excellence Award Series 2012 on ET Now. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to ET Now.